Imagine a pendulum with some heavy object attached to it and you want to hit it with some projectile and measure the deviation after the impact as a height difference delta h. We denote the mass of the projectile as m and its velocity as v. The mass of the big object we denote as capital M. After the collision, we get a new object with the mass of M plus capital M. There are two possible approaches that come to mind to solve this problem. You could try just the conservation of energy. The total energy of the system before the impact is just the kinetic energy of the projectile. And the total energy of the system after the impact can be written just as its potential energy at the highest deviation from the rest state. A naive approach would be to just write an equal sign between these two, and by solving for delta H, you would get the following expression. Since I said that this is a naive approach, you might guess that this solution is in fact wrong. The reason for this is that in this system, the energy is not conserved. It is a nice exercise to stop here and think about why is this the case. The true reason is that there are more forms of energy in this system than just kinetic and potential energy. In the moment of impact, our system permanently transforms to a different one, which means that it is not invariant under a time translation, and energy is conserved only in completely reversible processes. Part of the kinetic energy of the projectile is consumed for the deformation during the impact, so there is only a fraction of this energy left for kinetic energy of the whole object. I will discuss this issue in another video, so if you are interested, I will add the link in the description when it's finished. To solve this problem properly, we have to divide the scenario into two pieces. In the first scenario, we consider the moment until the projectile hit the object, including the impact. We can now calculate the velocity of the whole object after the impact using the conservation of momentum. Before the impact, the momentum of the projectile is m times v, and the resulting momentum after the impact is m plus capital M times u, where u is the velocity of the whole object after the impact. These two have to be equal since the momentum has to be conserved. And from this, we can easily extract the velocity of the whole object after the impact. In the second scenario, we consider the system right after the impact to the moment of its highest deviation. Since impact here has already happened, we are free to use the conservation of energy. The total energy of this system right after the impact is just its kinetic energy, which is given by the velocity u, and the energy at the highest point is given by the potential energy. These energies have to be equal, and we can extract the deviation we are looking for. Substituting for u, we get the final form of the equation for delta h. If you compare our result with our naive approach, you see that they look kind of similar, except for this mass term where we have to square it in the correct result. So what difference does it make? If you look closely, you see that this term is a dimensionless parameter that has values inside the interval from 0 to 1. This immediately tells you the difference because squaring a number between 0 and 1 always makes the result smaller, and therefore the deviation delta h in the correct result is gonna be smaller. Now, remember how we got these results. We used the conservation of momentum in the correct result and the conservation of energy in the wrong result. Since the wrong result gives us higher delta h, it means that we are missing energy. And moreover, you can notice that the bigger the mass of the object, which we denote as capital M, the more energy we are going to lose. 
Let's try to calculate this for an object with the mass of 100 kilograms and a projectile with the mass of 20 grams and the initial velocity of 330 meters per second. Use both equations just to see what difference this squared master makes to delta H. By evaluating these equations, we get the following result. In a correct case, we got delta H just 2.2 millimeters. So the heavy object barely moves when the projectile hits. However, in the incorrect example, we got the delta H over 1 meter, which seems weird just by common sense. Anyway, if you are a fan of Tarantino movies, you might get tricked because it seems like the incorrect example applied in shooting scenes. I think Tarantino should have me employed for this animation. Anyway, I hope you have got something out of this video and don't forget to watch the explanation of where is the remaining energy if it's not conserved that I'm going to add in a description later.